Let's say I wanted to take n derivatives of a Gaussian, Gaussian function. So let's say that I wanted to evaluate this derivative n times acting on this Gaussian. What would I get? Well, the first one's easy. First one, we know how to do that. Derivative of e to the minus x squared is going to get us minus 2x e to the minus x squared. Easy enough. Uh, what if I wanted to do this again? What if I wanted to take the second derivative? Well, in this case, same thing. I take a derivative you know, of this guy right here to get it. It's going to be a product rule. So what's going to happen? We're going to get minus 2 e to the minus x squared plus, plus what? Plus 4x squared e to the minus x squared, right? Because we're going to have first term, differentiate the first guy, leave the second guy there. Second term, leave the first guy there, differentiate the right-hand guy, and we're going to get this. And this whole thing right here can be written as um, one big polynomial, 4x squared minus 2 times e to the minus x squared. All right, so, so we've got a polynomial times our exponential function, times our Gaussian. What about a third derivative? Well, a third derivative third derivative, what we just take the derivative of this guy right here. And what do we get? Well, we're going to get, and it's going to be a little painful. So we're going to have a product rule. Our first term, we're going to get eight X times E to the minus X squared plus, and then we're going to have what we're going to have minus two X times four X squared minus two E to the minus X squared. And this whole thing right here is equal to minus 8x cubed minus 12x e to the minus x squared. Okay, so we're, we're seeing a little bit of a pattern emerge here, right? So we're seeing that um, first off, with each of these derivatives, what we're getting is our, our normal e to the minus x squared multiplied by a polynomial. Here it's a monomial, here we have two terms, and here we have again two terms. And there's something interesting about the terms. We see that the highest order term is always equal to uh, this highest order derivative we have. So here we have an x squared and we're taking the second derivative. Here we have an x cubed and we're taking a third derivative. And, and we also see that all of the terms in the polynomial are either odd or even. And that's something that maybe we can sort of see from the get-go, just from, from this derivative, because we know that e to the minus x squared is even, so a derivative has to be odd, a second derivative has to be even, third derivative has to be odd, uh, so we have all of these, uh, all, all these properties showing up here, uh, but you know, we we could have continued on. We could have said, what about the fourth derivative? What about the fifth derivative? So you can see that it's kind of it gets kind of tough as we keep going on. You know, a fourth derivative would have taken even longer to calculate. What about a tenth derivative or a hundredth derivative? Uh, in order to combat this, one thing that we could have done, or one thing that we could do, is we could say, all right, I'm kind of sick of calculating derivatives. Um, why don't I just define some special function and I'm going to say, all right, uh, the nth derivative of this Gaussian is going to be, it's going to be some polynomial Pn of x times, just times this uh, exponential function right here, times our Gaussian. And that's just about what Hermit polynomials are all about. What a Hermit polynomial is, it's almost exactly this. It is saying that the nth derivative of e to the minus x squared is equal to minus 1 to the n times that Hermite polynomial e to the minus x squared. So Hermite polynomials are defined to be these polynomials right here that show up in front of these exponential functions that show up in these derivatives. Now you might ask, well, wait a minute, why do we have this extra minus 1 popping out here? You know, if, if we were just to look for the polynomial that we get out, there wouldn't be that extra minus 1. Well, the reason is because you'll notice on all of these odd powered terms, like this first and third derivative, you, we have a minus sign out in front. And so that minus sign right there is just to, uh, to allow for all of these polynomials to have the highest order degree be positive. So here we would have x being positive, here we, ha we would have x cubed being positive. So that, that's the only reason that uh, this minus sign shows up, is just to make sure that highest order term is positive. Um, and so because of this right here, this is actually uh, this is actually a way of defining the Hermite polynomials. The Hermite polynomials 
r minus 1 to the n, and we can solve for it, right? e to the x squared dn dx n e to the minus x squared. And so these are our Hermite polynomials. And, and, and this is this is the motivation for why why we even define them, because we have this annoying problem right here where we have to take repeated derivatives of Gaussian functions. Now you might be rightfully wondering, well, wait a minute, you know, this is kind of a, you know, like, well, why, why do we actually care about this problem? You know, does this is this actually relevant? Does this actually come up? And the answer is yes. Not only does it come up, but these functions actually show up in a whole load of important places in, in physics and probability such that um, we'll see in, in later videos that you know this 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 approach of you know have having some annoying derivative you need to take actually is sort of the gateway to a whole bunch of really interesting and important properties and uses of Hermite polynomials um, but I think I'll stop there um, yeah, in the next video, I'll start looking more and more into just how, how, how deep we can go with these Hermit polynomials.